Hi there, my name's Mia Barry. I um, went to the University of Newcastle in 1996 and I graduated in 2000. I studied a Bachelor of Commerce degree and I majored in International Finance. And that degree set me up for where I am today. Um, I'm CFO and I'm about to start my new role as CFO of Oriton. Prior to that, I was CFO of The Iconic, um, the online fashion retailer in Australia. In, in coming back to Australia, I was fortunate enough to gain a role as financial director um, of Oceana of Gate Gourmet. Um, and they were going through a huge amount of change there as well. Um, we went through a number of acquisitions, a number of mergers. And um, after that, I went to Coca-Cola, worked in a number of roles there at Coca-Cola, headed up their um, retail division. So I was the head of finance for the retail division, which um, was the largest division of um, Coca-Cola Emmetal at that stage. And, you know, really looked after a lot of the sales in, in sort of the space of Coles and Woolworths and so that was a quite an intensive role. Following Coca-Cola I actually worked at, I, I went to join um, the Iconic as CFO so that was my first CFO role. So even though I had been a finance director a number of times in previous organisations, um, this was my first role as CFO of an organisation and I was very fortunate for that to be the Iconic. For those that don't know, the Iconic is the largest online um, retailer of fashion and sports in Australia and Again, like it's a very similar story to uh, when I joined the train line. At that time, they were probably around about 300 million in turnover, and they had aspirations to really grow that up to $1 billion in turnover and got a good way there in the three years that I was at the Iconic. There were a lot of challenges for any company going from a startup to being a, a you know a scalable growth size company, moving from a small company into um, a large company um, number one in that space. Um, so a lot of focus was around how do we actually set this company up for, for success, how do we scale um, and at the same time continue to offer that awesome customer experience. Over the last 12 to 24 months you've seen a greater migration of businesses to online and I'm not sure if that's because of the Amazon effect where with Amazon coming into the market a few companies decided that now was the right time to, to move online. But you still see in Australia the penetration of the online market is, is below what you have in many other developed markets such as the UK and the US and, and also Canada in fact. So in terms of online I think you know there's a few key features that are really important when you're when you're operating an online business and some of that's around really ensuring that that customer experience is is like seamless and by seamless I mean you know a customer can get to what they're trying to buy within a few clicks that once they get there, their checkout is, is a very quick and easy and convenient checkout. And then ensuring that after the sales, so like once they have purchased, that you actually ensure that you deliver, um, it doesn't always have to be as fast as possible, but you deliver in a way that it gives customer confidence that they're actually going to receive those items. Following that, you know, if they need to return an item, make sure it's really easy to return. I, you know, me as a consumer, I buy a lot online, but I also return a lot on buy, uh, online. I don't actually really go shopping in a mall anymore. <laughs> so then I'm just about to start my new role um, at Oriton and I joined that in July. Um, so that's a hugely exciting role to be joining. Again, um, working in that, that fashion um, and accessory space in a company that's actually just coming into the online space. I think that um, in the last year or so, they've really developed in that space. So I'm hoping that I can add a, a fair bit of my skill set um, in, in that area. I often get asked the question as to what does a typical day of a CFO look like? And I think the answer to that is there's no <laughs> typical day of a CFO. Um, I think as you know, every day is different and that's what I love uh, about the role, um, especially with the companies that I've worked for um, and worked with in that they've always been through constant change. So there is no typical day. But the one thing that pretty much stays consistent is your need to lead people and to lead organizations. And I think that's a really important part of um, being a leader, whether you're a CFO, whether you're a CMO, whether you're a CEO, it's about sort of like the leadership of, of your teams and you don't achieve anything without um, your people and having the right people on your teams. So a, a lot of my role is around making sure that um, people in, in my team and in the organization have a really clear view of what our objectives are, what we're trying to achieve. Um, and where we need to focus our efforts and then making sure that that's communicated quite quite well um, in terms of you know they know what their the role is in relation to the objectives so there's that clarity of role clarity of objectives and a strong communication um, channel 
Then the final area I think as a leader that's really important is um, making sure that the team members collabor collaborate across functions. And there's, you know, as a CFO and um, an executive, you're in a really unique um, place whereby you actually get to see the whole operations of an organization on a daily basis. You're not in the detail, but you get to see the whole operation. So you can actually help um, really organize and manage cross-functionally how people work together and how teams collaborate together. And I think as an executive, um, that's a really important um, skill set that you need to have. So, I, you know, people probably heard it before, the three C's, but I think that's really important as a leader and as an, an executive to have that clarity, that communication, that collaboration. Um, really um, at, at the forefront when you're when you're leading. I think being a um, finance professional in this day and age is about being a business partner to contribute to value and to being quite strategic in um, and, and supporting strategy. Um, as I mentioned before, like my days are very varied, but um, a lot of what I'm trying to achieve every day is operational and strategic outcomes. Um, and through doing that, a lot of it's around working with people giving direction around um, driving strategy and asking a lot of questions. I think as a finance professional, you are in a really great position where you get to see things that are happening in marketing, you get to see things that are happening in sales and in operations. And your role as a financial professional is to bring that all together and support the achievement of, of strategy. To me, I never actually set my mind out to be a CFO. Um, it's just the way things ended up. I think um, throughout my career, I've always really um, strived to do, you know, really good quality work, um, to actually support other people in doing good quality work, and um, support organisations in in driving their objectives, understanding their objectives, and being really curious about how we actually optimise processes, how we optimise work, um, and how we really drive strong financial outcomes. Um, apparently I'm quite good at it <laughs> um, and as a result I've, I've ended up as, as CFO but I think you know that's something there's something in that in terms of to focus on things that you're actually good at you and you enjoy doing ultimately you'll probably be successful in, in what you do if you're trying to do something that you're not enjoying that you drag yourself out of bed to do every single day then maybe you need to reassess what it is that you're actually doing to me, it's always been really important in my career to give back what has been given to me. Um, I've been really fortunate to have been surrounded by a lot of, you know, really strong managers, really strong mentors throughout my career. And I get a huge amount of, I get a huge amount of fulfillment and uh, out of actually helping other people achieve their idea of success. And, and through that, I, you know, I, I really, support um, my team members, people who I've worked with in the past no longer work with around actually really defining what their career success is and really helping them in actually achieving that career success. That gives me, as I mentioned, a huge amount of fulfillment and it, it sort of is part of my why in terms of why I go to work every day. It's not about the, the work, it's about the people that I'm working with.